Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology. Nice to see you back. I'll just check the sound settings, and yes, it seems to be perfect. All right, ladies and gentlemen. After eight months, finally, we are starting back with the Gemini Ascendants again. Yes, Ascendant series that started it long time back, but it was halted. And now uh, I had made a video on uh, Gemini Ascendants in which I had described uh, the houses, uh, the, uh, the all the 12 houses and which planets are ruling which houses and just a flavor of how to study the Ascendant. But today we will discuss primarily on the planets uh, which is a bit similar but in a way I will also explain the exaltation and the debilitation signs. So if you have not watched that video then you need to watch and uh, after that you can watch this video and i've already made these two videos uh, for aries and taurus ascendants these four videos and i will also make these for the remaining ascendants all right so there you go if you're new to the channel please subscribe to it below and if you want a consultation from me regarding your ascendant you can always go down to the description section of my videos and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him so let's talk of mercury so gemini is ruled by mercury as you all know so mercury rules the first house and the fourth house and now of course gemini is originally the third house so i've discussed all of these in the previous video so i will not discuss them here again so mercury rules the first and the fourth and it gets exalted in the fourth house and it gets debilitated in the 10th house of course all right so what is this mercury ruling the first and the fourth so the ascendant here because mercury rules two houses it also rules another kendra all right so <clears throat> therefore uh, it is a very crucial planet for this ascendant not because it is the ascendant lord I and mean, of course it is because it is the most important plan but it also rules another kendra so uh, therefore this becomes very crucial and it rules the fourth house basically so fourth house is the house of happiness and comfort basically fourth house is the house of stability in life so therefore uh, that's the peculiarity about gemini ascendants that uh, they may dislike stability sometimes. They may like to hop from one place to the other. But uh, it is very crucial that they have stability in life because otherwise they they might uh, not be very happy. So therefore, it is good to hop from one place to other. There's no, nothing wrong in that. But uh, we should also have reasonable amount of stability in life. And we should have the right knowledge and we should always do we should do our research before we finalize a one particular area of life. Why do I say this? Because Gemini ascendants can have a tendency to commit things very fast, commit to things very fast. And this dynamics, this dynamic is very, uh, it's very much reflecting in this 410 axis. So 10th house, as you know, is the house where we take decisions, where we make decisions, where sun is, uh, during the noon so therefore uh, in the 10th house when mercury goes he gets debilitated there so therefore gemini ascendant should always be very careful when they are making decisions or this could also mean they may have a difficulty in decision making and yeah i forgot to give the disclaimer here whatever i say here will not apply uh, 100 percent in your horoscope it may not even apply more than 20 to 30 percent because you have a different horoscope. There are one sixth of the world population is Gemini ascendants, all right, approximately. So, therefore, all of them will not have all these things. So, you don't have to freak out. You don't have to kill yourself. You don't have to punish me or anybody else if things don't match, all right. You don't have to blast. You don't have to uh, think that the world is going to end because things are not matching, all right. So, Ultimately, what happens depends on your horoscope and your dashas and transit. So that is the disclaimer which I'm giving. So, but you can still uh, watch this video and get a hint of how how should these ascendants behave in general. Okay, so this is not a prediction video. This is a behavioral video, and how you behave will depend on where your Mercury is, of course. All right. So not all Gemini ascendants will be like this. 
All right, so 10th house, as you know, is the house of decision making. So they should be very careful when they make certain decisions in life, especially prominent decisions, because they might feel that uh, you might feel that you are making decisions too hastily or very quickly without much thinking. So therefore, uh, because uh, wherever the sign of debilitation is, it's always like a temptation. Yes, that's a secret I'm telling you. <laughs> so wherever the sign of exaltation is, you may not like that because you need a lot of power to execute that. You will always like the sign of debilitation more sometimes. Uh, but that's the fun. Uh, the, the result is the reverse. Right? So if you go towards the sign of debilitation, you suffer. But if you go towards the sign of exaltation, you will have a better life later on. So therefore, don't fall into the temptation of uh, going and making some Bhishma Pratigya or some big declaration without, without thinking. So fourth house is the house of knowledge. So you should sit down, have, have knowledge of the areas that you are wanting to go ahead in your life. And only then you should make decisions. Because if you make that, then the 10th house will support the 4th house. Right? Then Mercury goes into Virgo, which is exhortation. Analysis. So you must, and you can also take help of uh, senior members of your family or your gurus. That is also very crucial because uh, the 10th house is lauded by Jupiter in this case. So before you make a decision, take help of some senior or some uh, or could be one astrologer or some life coach or any member in your field. Suppose you want to make a decision in your career, then you should approach a career counselor. Okay. And the fourth house is the house of education and research. So the research you should do yourself, but before you make a decision, you should consult others if you feel the need. But if you are confident enough, then you can do. This is not to say that Gemini ascendants are not confident or they are shy or anything like that. I'm not saying that. I'm saying be careful before you make a decision. If you feel it's right, then go ahead. All right. Now, now let's talk of the moon. So moon rules the second house here and he gets exalted in the 12th house in Taurus and he gets debilitated in the 6th house in the sign of Scorpio. So moon rules the second house. So therefore, uh, Gemini ascendance can, uh, although it seems, it's very peculiar, it's very weird about Gemini, I have always noticed that it may seem they are talking a lot of things or they are too much behaving on an intellectual platform. Gemini is like uh, the jack of all trades, master of none, they say like this, but in my experience I have seen Gemini people, uh, they may be telling of 10 different things, but unless they have an emotional connection with somebody, they it's very difficult for them to uh, connect with that person at a deeper level I have seen and because this gets exalted in the 12th house so Gemini ascendance can have a tendency to speak too much and uh, waste a lot of uh, your, their own time and uh, the other person's time also so uh, one of my friend he is a Gemini ascendant I know him and uh, sometimes my friends tell me that uh, when he calls and, and then um, people are like, can we talk in the next six months? All right. So now it may seem very rude or very uh, arrogant, but then sometimes uh, people may not have that much time to listen to us. So therefore, because it's in the 12th house of loss and it gets exalted there, we, we, we will have the temptation to keep talking, 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 talking all the time. So you've got to resist that. All right, and what is the sixth house? It gets debilitated in the sixth house. So sixth house can actually show the things which matter in this world. All right, sixth house shows all the problems of this world. So uh, it can happen sometimes with Gemini people. I have seen that uh, you may be talking of the problems, but you are not talking out of a solution-oriented approach. You are just talking because you, you 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 just like to talk. So that kind of talk is the twelfth house actually where you're just talking because of no reason. You, you don't know anything why you are doing what or what you should be doing, all right? And sixth house talks are like, okay, this is the problem. What is the solution? So uh, Gemini Ascendant should make sure they are not only wasting time talking about problems. It's good to talk about problems, but you should also talk about the solutions and not only talk, just do also, all right? And uh, if you do this, then you will see your relations will greatly improve because second house shows your family and your family relations. 
So if if you have some member uh, Gemini ascendant in your family, you could find that they are only talking of problems. This problem is there, that problem is there. This is not good. That is not good. People in general criticizing the government or their leader sometimes. Uh, I've seen this with Gemini ascendant. But if you talk with a solution oriented approach, then uh, things will be very good. People will like you. Why? Because you can see both the sides of the coin. You can see things which nobody can see. You can see the plus and the minus, the pros and cons also. So take this on a positive note. So therefore, this is very important for you. And as I said, it's very important that you relate to it emotionally because it's the moon after all. Now let's talk of the sun. Sun rules the third house as expected. <laughs> And he gets exalted in the 11th house in the sign of Aries and he gets debilitated in the sign of Libra, which is in the 5th house. So therefore, 3rd Lord exalted in the 11th. 3rd house shows connections. So you have a, you can, Gemini ascendants can have a tendency to, because the exaltation is there on the 11th house. All right. So you could have a tendency to call every acquaintance as your friend. So I have seen this with Gemini Ascendants. Very, very, very true. This is like bang on I have seen. Suppose you are from uh, North India. Suppose you are from New Delhi. And you tell them, oh, actually, you know, I went to New Delhi recently. And they'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah New Delhi. That's like my home, you know. And then, okay, I went to Mumbai, India. Oh, yeah, yeah Mumbai, I know, I know. Mumbai is my place. I know I have many friends there, you know. <laughs> So they, they, they can pretend sometimes they know everything. They know all the people in this world and uh, they they know they know what's going on in every corner of this world. All right, because the exaltation sign is there. You 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 have a tendency to prove to your acquaintances, which is the third house, uh, that uh, everybody is like your friend. Eleventh house shows your known people who are familiar to you, places which are familiar. So you could have a tendency to talk to people uh, and because it is the sun, you could derive a lot of uh, sense of, uh, I won't call it negative ego, but a sense of accomplishment. So uh, the, these people I know, they, 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 they can sometimes have a tendency to talk uh, of how many great big personalities they know. So uh, like uh, one girl I knew, she was a Demi Ascendant and Anytime you talk of film industry or astrology uh, so, so circles or dance or music or anything like that, she will be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know this person. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know that person from this big, big industry. You know, he's, he's, he or she is that uh, big shot in that big, big industry. So uh, because it's the sun. So sun can show things which are like big. You like to boast about it. You like to tell about it. You like to show that you know, you know him, you know her, you know everybody basically. Then it gets debilitated in the fifth house. So that is the precarious situation. So fifth house can show things which you actually cherish. So 11th house also shows things which you cherish, but it is more at an external level. So uh, for Gemini Ascendants, the, the struggle could be at times that... Uh, you know everybody else of this world except yourself because fifth house can show what you like to do in the morning okay or in the day or any time fifth house shows why you get up in the morning so uh, gemini ascendance uh, because of knowing too many things knowing too many people knowing too many places knowing, knowing too many groups circles societies organizations they might feel that they, they might uh, feel sometimes that they are somewhere lost and therefore they should rekindle that within themselves. And therefore they should try to meditate and see that, okay, I know these people, but do they know me? Should I repeat, I know them, but do they know me? Like I may say, I, I know this big superstar, but not necessarily that that person knows me. So, so therefore uh, you, you might feel that I know everything of this world, but then where do I lie? So therefore, it's very crucial for Gemini Ascendants. If you feel, if, you're, if in your horoscope, sun is not well placed or Mercury is not well placed, you, you might feel that there's a lack of direction in life, which means there's no goal, there's no focus because the fifth house can have a debilitated planet in your case. And, and that's that to the planet like the sun. So therefore, it's crucial that you find the direction in life properly. The first thing you should do in your life. And then when you find, then you can use the 11th house to make contacts, to you know find acquaintances. Then that will help you. But 
if you go the other way around you are just going on making connections and not having any goal any focus any purpose in life then you might feel that sense of emptiness once you come home when you sleep you may feel ah i don't know what i am doing in life so therefore it's crucial that you uh, find a healthy sense of ego when you are finding your uh, when you when you are finding your life purpose that's very crucial for you right so now let's talk about venus venus rules the 5th and the 12th and he gets exalted in the 10th house of course and he gets debilitated in the 4th house <clears throat> And this is a very uh, peculiar situation even for venus <laughs> because he gets debilitated in the house where he gets uh, digbali venus gets digbali in the 10th in the 4th house but here he gets debilitated all right so therefore uh, venus rules your 5th and your 12th uh, therefore you are by nature very creative very much uh, outgoing you are very much into fun activities and uh, this gets exalted in the 10th house in the sign of pisces so it's very good if you can take your creativity to your uh, into your work so if you do any kind of creative work this will really 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 benefit you and at the same time uh, you should also understand that uh, creativity is not just external you have to it's not just drawing something or you know making some painting or singing or dancing it's not that basically that is good if you want to do it at a level of career but when it comes to your own self then also you need to understand that you must be really creative inside also you you must be able to see life in a creative way not just doing things creatively so therefore you do things creatively but when it comes to your home when it comes to your inner space then you should also try to decorate that your home or uh, your life basically in general Okay, and not just externally doing some uh, interior design or something like that. You have to. You should identify what are the areas which make you beautiful from inside. That is also very crucial because there Venus gets debilitated. All right, and that area could be a very strong area in your life if you pursue it properly because Venus gets big belly there in the fourth house. So therefore, beautify yourself and beautify uh, the external world also. You will do great service to humanity. Now let's talk of Mars. He rules the sixth, the eleventh, gets exalted in the eighth house, and he gets debilitated in the second house in the sign of Cancer. Okay, so Mars is a very interesting planet. He rules your enemies and your friends also. <laughs> sixth house is your enemies, and eleventh is the sixth from the sixth. So enemies, enemy, which is your friend. So he gets exalted in the eighth house. So. uh if your horoscope supports and your the sign is also indicating that you could feel that uh the the friend that your friends can sometimes be uh, who they are actually not or they may uh, they may not tell that which they are doing or they may say something and they may do something else because eighth house is the uh eighth house is is where it gets exalted and uh eighth house can show sudden ups and downs so therefore what does it mean that it gets exalted here this means that uh this this can affect you very strongly at a in at, at an internal level so therefore it is very crucial that if you because as you know the sun third lord gets exalted in 11 so therefore it's very crucial that when you are kind of making friends but those closed inner friends in your inner circle Right? it is very crucial that you uh, make sure that they are really your close friends they are not just these acquaintances who you are just roaming around uh, and just partying around all the time so therefore it's crucial that uh, and if if they cheat you sometimes if they uh, if they defy you or they 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 lie to you sometimes then this can become a great source of transformation why because then this this will actually now uh, the exaltation sign always helps the planet irrespective of the house so if suppose somebody does uh, somebody cheats you or somebody lies to you okay some friend of yours then because of that what will happen you uh, because it is the sign of exaltation capricorn therefore you will become very realistic you will become very practical you will become very much focused you will know okay now i 
now last time this person did like this this time i have to be careful so use it positively don't don't think that oh this person has uh, cheated me or uh, has done something wrong to me everybody will do like this don't do, don't don't think like that take the lesson and move away move away from it and meet new people socialize and uh, then you should then then and when you do that then you will know whom to make a part of your family because uh, this gets debilitated in the second house so you may have a fear sometimes that okay should i make this person a part of my family or not right or maybe this person turns into my family or my enemy or something like this or this friend turns into my enemy or this friend can go in uh, go, can go and uh, create enmities uh, within me and my family members so therefore uh, understand that people can behave badly sometimes everybody will not behave the way we want and if that happens to you unfortunately sometimes then take lessons and move move ahead right and by that you will gain a lot of wisdom you will have inner transformation be it how that who should you believe who should you not believe so that will transform you as a person and by that you can distinguish your 6th house enemies better and your 11th house your friends better so that will actually help you although it is happening in a dusthana now let's talk of jupiter he rules the 7th and the 10th and he gets exalted in the 2nd and he gets debilitated in the 8th house all right so this is opposite of mars so therefore gemini ascendants 7th lord 10th lord getting exalted in the 7th so therefore the for you is very crucial that when you are uh, making any final decision related to your marriage or Uh, your career it see for for you because this exaltation is in the second house it's very crucial that you feel as if uh, these things are like a part of your home because second house is your family so uh, if you could do some family business or continue your family business that would be a great option or your spouse could spouse could also help in your family business that would also be a great great option and because this gets exalted there so if the family aspect is there then it then it will make wonders in your life so for example if you are getting married to somebody then uh, if you are already married then make sure you try to cultivate that sense of family not just partnership not just two people staying together and signing a contract it's a family after all so have children have kids stay with your parents stay with your grandparents if they are stay with your kids your grandchildren and then by that sense of familyhood your marriage will become more strong your your career will become more strong and you need to have a emotional connection also you cannot just uh, do things just like that because the 10th lord gets exalted in cancer so therefore you must feel that the work which you are doing is something which is adding value so you may not be very comfortable in doing some routine work just for money and that's fine you you don't have to do that you can start your own business you can do the work which you like so doing some work which gives you emotional fulfillment is very 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 crucial and cultivating that same sense uh, of family and emotional bonding within a marriage is also very crucial uh, otherwise if you don't have that then it gets debilitated in the age so there could be a sense of insecurity you could always feel maybe oh this person is cheating on me this person is lying this person is having an affair with somebody or this person doesn't love me like me you know so so therefore don't get into that eighth house factor all right then we have to talk about saturn saturn is the lord of the eighth the ninth and it gets exalted in the fifth and it gets debilitated in the 11th house so therefore mars eighth and uh, this uh uh 11th and this saturn also 8 11 is very visible here so therefore now 8th lord and 9th lord so saturn has to deal with all the transformation and spiritual upliftment in your life so for gemini ascendants because of your nature it's very important that you do some very disciplined spiritual practice that is very 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 crucial for you otherwise you may feel that you are not making progress spiritually and because this gets exalted in your fifth house so therefore you will always realize that you eventually have to develop a loving relationship with god otherwise you will feel that uh, your spiritual practices are not uh, yielding much results you are not able to transform yourself right so 
now this gets uh, debilitated in the 11 so the more you try to uh, be uh, i would say externally you try to do show off you 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 will not succeed so uh, for you it's more important to uh, read read the bhagavad gita and then understand it rather than uh, uploading a photo of reading the gita in facebook and getting 1000 likes right so therefore uh, and because fifth house shows your close circles 11th house shows the mass gatherings <clears throat> So even when you go to a spiritual community, you must make sure that uh, you make very good friends there who are like the fifth house, right? And you are very close with them, and you are very you are having very intimate relations with them. You 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 are, you love them basically, and not not on a physical or sexual or romantic or on a partner level, but in general they can be anybody. So. They should be like, uh, they should be really like you, you all should be loving each other, like, you know, friends, best friends. So if you want to make spiritual progress, you have to do your uh, own sadhana that, that is there. But where you also need association of uh, a spiritual community, which is in the 11th house. And because it gets debilitated there, so you really need to make sure that they are not just superficial connections. Otherwise, if you go to a spiritual community and you might feel lost there, what the hell is going on? Anybody is doing what? So uh, have a proper guru, take mantra diksha because fifth house is also mantra diksha. And then have a close circle of friends by which you can, or with whom you can share your uh, sorrows and your you can share your joys also. And by that, you will make rapid spiritual progress. All right. And this is true with your in-laws also because it's the 8th house. But because now the 8th is linked with the ninth, so this is more related to inner transformation and spiritual progress and uh, trying to uplift yourself, all right? And then Rahu, Ketu, Rahu, if you take Gemini, then he gets exalted in the Ascendant and gets debilitated in the 7th. And Ketu, the opposite, of course, he gets exalted in the 7th and debilitated in the Ascendant itself. So... Because Rahu gets exalted in the Lagna, so you can feel uh, you can feel that everything is hyped more than it is required sometimes. Oh, this has happened. Oh my God, this will happen. If this doesn't happen, that will happen. This will happen. That will happen. Calm down. Shut your mind. Be peaceful. The world is not going to end if something happens. All right. So this happens when Rahu gets exalted in the Lagna, and you might have a tendency to blow up things more than it is necessary. And you might be so much conscious about yourself that now gets debilitated in the seven that you are not considerate about the other person. That is why you might you may be too much vocal about your own opinions and not consider much about others. All right. So therefore, be considerate to others also. Don't just think of yourself. All right. And uh, now regarding K two, K two gets exalted in the uh, in the seventh house and he gets debilitated in the ascendant. So therefore. Uh, you could feel sometimes if you are not having a spiritual path that uh, your life is not heading anywhere. You are confused. You are like a headless being just roaming like that because Ketu is headless, right? Therefore, it is very crucial you have the right guidance. Uh, you have a guru, you have a mentor and you take proper guidance from people, from your family members, from your friends. And uh, you then you make the right decisions and only then you can feel that uh, you are not headless, you have a proper direction in life and that direction can come from Sagittarius, which is the other house. Now, th that can also be difficult sometimes because others may end up making you more confused. So therefore, Gemini Ascendance, although you may have so many contacts, but the thrust of the matter is from the third house, sixth house, eleventh house, eighth house and from Ketu because of these planets, Mars, Sun, Saturn, Ketu. It's very, very, very crucial that you may know a million people but you should at least have five very good friends by with whom you can always just be yourself. So therefore, so that so that they can help you, though they can suggest you, they can guide you, and you should always have a mentor or a guru. All right. So that is my conclusion for Gemini ascendance. And again, disclaimer at the end, as I said, you don't have to freak out if things are not matching. And uh, if you are uh, new to the channel, then please subscribe to it. And if you want a consultation from me. Regarding your ascendant, then you can always go to the description section down. Okay. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him.